Hello everyone. My mentee Tuba uh, graduated from uh, Atılım University in the departments of mathematics, uh, and she was interested in uh, analysis, especially complex analysis. So she will explain conformal mapping today. Uh, yes, Tuba, we are listening to you. Good luck. Thank you, Jam, and I would like to say something. Uh, this process uh, it was an efficient process for me and thank you for your attribution for me and i also want to thank for the organizer of the, the program and also uh, for thanks for my uh, uh, teacher Hilya Atalan and thank you for all of us and now i can start Uh, hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about conformal mappings. I will present it in four parts. Firstly, we will investigate uh, the concept of conformal mappings, and then we will focus on uh, fundamental points on conformal mapping. And then we will look some special form of transformations. And fin finally, we will give a quick look for the applications of conformal mapping. But before starting, what is a mapping? To graph a, a complex function, we need a uh, two plane, since we cannot uh, graph a complex function and because it's uh, living for dimension, we need a Z plane and Z V plane. The points in the V plane corresponds to points in the plane by a function, we say that that function is a mapping. And today we will mainly focus on one to one mapping. Now let us uh, investigate the concept of conform mappings with some uh, questions. So what is a conform mapping? Uh, we can say that a conform mapping is a mapping that has an angle preserving property. Uh, what is an angle preserving property? They will say it a few minutes later. What is the importance of conformal mappings? Um, we are mainly used to conform mappings in the boundary variable, solution of the boundary variable problems associated with Laplace equations. And, and one of the main uh, uh, class of the boundary variable problems is dish the problem. And in the solution of this, these problems, we are using the conform mappings to make uh, our domain simpler. And under some conditions, um, always such a mapping exists. You will see it later again, uh, again and later. And we can ask some other questions here. But now let us focus on our main uh, parts. One of the main part is the definition of the conformal mapping. And what is a, what is a con conform mapping informally? We say that the conformal mapping is a complex mapping that has uh, an angle preserving property. Uh, what is an angle preserving property? This definition say, uh, explain this. Okay, you have a complex uh, complex mapping in D, uh, and in D you have uh, two smooth oriented curves C one and C two intersecting at Z zero, and between these curves you have an, an angle, and by a complex function, uh, they. Uh, uh, they have an image in the v-plane and the, in the angle between the image uh, curves uh, is if is equal in the domain the angle between in curves in the domain he said that the these angles are equal uh, are equal in magnitude and sense if there's uh, direction and the size in absolute value uh, is e are equal. We say that 
the, the angle is equal in magnitude and sense. Okay, uh, how can we find the angle between uh, the curves? Uh, using the argument of a complex number, we can find the angle uh, both in magnitude and sense. And how? First, uh, we see that uh, the, we have two uh, smooth oriented curves intersecting at set zero. And we have tangent vectors uh, to these curves. And then we move this point to the origin. And since each tangent curve has have an angle between x axis, and then they, and they have an also orientation, then we, are, we subtract and we get the angle. Uh, in the in, in the closed interval pi zero to pi, it has a unique uh, value, so we can determine easily its magnitude and sense, but actually not easily. Uh, let us look at some basic uh, conformal mappings. Uh, all types. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> uh, all linear complex function is a conformal mapping. Also exponential uh, complex function, reciprocal function, power function, or trigonometric functions are conformal, conformal in some domain. Okay, we, we have some conformal mappings. They are basic, they are elementary conformal mappings. But uh, what they are, what do they behave in this uh, concept? Let us look at behaviors of them. Uh, linear mapping behaves in that, linear mapping behaves that uh, they transform uh, our domain to somewhere else, or it can rotate our domain or it makes its size big or small, it can uh, change like this. Also reciprocal mapping, uh, if your domain is circular, and as you can see, we have on the boundary circle, by reciprocal function, this uh, circle will be mapped to a line or vice versa, uh, like uh, also power ma mapping um, make um, our domain bigger or small with its uh, radius and angle arguments. Okay, we say that here, uh, somehow we have we are restrict ourselves and then choose the uh, a small domain but uh, if we choose our domain uh, to a, a whole complex plane then what happens under conformal mapping uh, conformal mapping uh, this sort our Disorder our domain into like here, it changes its shape. Also, under a t to z, uh, our complex uh, plane will be transformed in this form. I think they're so uh, amazing for me. But let us look at uh, much closer with a video. And in the video, we are we have a complex plane. And as you can see how it changes our complex plane in a different plane under the complex uh, mapping Z square. And we have also another uh, complex uh, conformal mapping. Uh, it's, it will change our complex plane to another plane. Let us look at it. Uh, 
as you can see how it changes. <laughs> it is so beautiful. Okay, you let us close here. Okay, I think so good. Okay, let us move. On the other hand, we, okay, we, see, we saw that uh, some examples of conform mapping. On the other hand, <coughs> on the other hand, um, there is a complex function that are not conformal. Uh, let us consider, for example, uh, the conjugate of z. As you can see here, in the z plane, we have a uh, pi over two and here also pi over two, their magnitude uh, are equal, but their sense, their direction is not equal. So the conjugate of Z is not in a equivalent sense. Therefore, it is not a conformal mapping. The second fundamental part is the conformal mapping theorem. And what uh, does say this theorem. This theorem says that if you have an analytic function, which is a complex differentiable uh, in a region R, not all complex plane, at every point in the region, it has an infinitely many times uh, differentiable. And if f is not equal zero at, at a, if the derivative of f is not equal zero at, at fixed point, we say that f is a conformal mapping. And the benefit of this theorem is that uh, we are, by the, with the help of this theorem, we can easily determine uh, if, if a function, a complex function is conformal or not. We can easily determine um, by, the, by the help of this theorem. And in the proof of this theorem, we need to uh, we need to uh, assume some points uh, here. We can assume here. I I will move, and then we use some tricks, and these tricks are the argument, the using of argument, and then we use the chain rule and property of the argument of a complex number. We see that theta and phi are equal. So uh, it's uh, okay because the definition is satisfied. Okay, this theorem says something about uh, conformal mapping or not a function, but uh, at critical points, this theorem does not say about any does not say about anything uh, uh, at, crit at crit about critical points. What happens then? What happens at critical points? And the next, uh, our next exam theorem answer this question. And this theorem says that at critical points, actually it is not a uh, conformal. Uh, besides, this theorem also says that you can determine how the angle changes. For example, let us consider uh, sine z. The first derivative of sine z at pi over two is zero, but the second derivative of sine z is minus sine z. Is, it is not equal to zero at pi over two. So, uh, and we have a, an angle pi in the v z plane, and the second since second derivative second derivative is not zero. Uh, our angle will be multiplied by two. So our angle in the V plane, so between the image curves, will be two pi, or in other words, zero. So our function sine z is not uh, conformal at pi over two. Now let us move uh, the last, not last, the other important part in conform mapping. I think the one of the most important parts because it's also uh, called fundamental theorem of conformal mapping. Uh, it examines the um, 
the such a mapping is always exist or not? It's theorem says that yes, it is. It is always exist. If you have a, a simply connected domain, and if this this domain is not all of the complex plane, it's then you have always a one-to-one -one conformal mapping uh, from our simply connected domain to onto opening disk. Mm, okay, but how uh, how does such a mapping exist? Um, okay, our uh, aim is to find a conform to find not find uh, the existence of a mapping uh, from B onto onto another uh, simply connected domain D prime uh, to find uh, to to paste it that domain we need to apply this term two times. First, we apply, uh, it's applied uh, from D onto opinion disk by the theorem, Riemann mapping theorem says that there is a such a mapping from D onto opinion disk D. Also, uh, we, there, is a, there is a mapping from D prime onto unit disk. Uh, by Riemann mapping theorem and Riemann mapping theorem uh, says that that function is one to one and so its inverse is exist and well defined and if we take composition of them we can get that uh, our desired complex uh, conformal mapping but not uh, the says about the, how can you find the conformal mapping uh here is the i think uh the simplest way of conformal find, uh, way of com by way of finding conformal mapping because in the example using given co complex function find the conformal mapping from this domain onto circular this circular domain we are uh, from this strip horizontal strip onto this uh, upper half is mapped by this uh, exponential function and then this exponential this upper half of uh, plane is mapped uh, onto circular region by this uh, complex function then so if we take the composition we can find our uh, conformal mapping. Now let us. Uh, now we can uh, look at some special transformation. One of them is linear fractional transformation. If we define our conformal mapping uh, as in this form, and with the requirement a d minus b c is not zero. We say that this type of conformal mapping is linear fractional transformation. And this linear fractional transformation, also called maybe transfer, transformation or bilinear trans, transformation. And using um, uh, the limit of the infinity and the poi, we can extend our definition to the uh, whole complex plane. And this special conformal mapping has a property, and this property says that, okay, you have a, a linear fractional transformation, and if your domain is circular, and your domain, since your domain is circular, and, and on the boundary you have a circle, the image of this circle under T is either circle or uh, a line in the extended V plane. It's, it says that it is line if it is C is not zero and the pole is on the circle. It must be on the circle. And here's the proof. But the main idea is that in the proof is that writing T of C 
as a composition of these three functions and then consider uh, it in two cases and then finally conclude that uh, the circles maps map onto either cir circles or line <coughs> and we can conclude that but let us look at um play <coughs> sorry <coughs> Let us uh, look at the concrete example. In this example, it is asking that find the image of circle, unit circle, uh, this unit circle and this unit circle under this linear fractional transformation. We can see that the pole one is on the circle here. So uh, according to uh, circle, according to our theorem, uh, this circle will be mapped onto line. And for the image, we choose a test point and then we decide which point we should shade it. And for this part, uh, we see that the, uh, the pole is not on the circle. So this circular shape will be uh, mapped onto a circle on the circle by okay and here is an ex clear explanation for that okay we say that Riemann mapping theorem uh, guarantees that uh, such a compound mapping exists from a domain simply connected domain to another but it does not give a way how to find a compound mapping and this is a way uh, how to find the conform mapping. And this, uh, the cross ratio, if we write uh, complex numbers in this form, we say that this form is called cross ratio. And if the image of these points uh, is, is that, is those, are those. And if we write them, into this form, this fractional form. And then if we solve this equation for V, we get a linear fractional transformation. And here's an example for this. We have some points and their image. Uh, at the end, uh, using theorem, we get this part, this fractional. But in this, uh, in this uh, concept, we need to be careful that uh, the order of complex number because uh, it changes, it can change the fraction, linear fractional transformation. And we have another uh, transformation and for finding a conform mapping, conform mapping between domains. Uh, this formula provides an explicit formula for the derivative of a conform mapping from upper half plane onto polygonal plane, uh, polygonal region. And we have this part. If we take the integral of that part, uh, that uh, derivative, we can get a conformal mapping. And it's, its antiderivative is always exist because uh, f is analytic in D. Now I am in the last part and I can, I will give an example and I will be, uh, I will have completed my presentation after that. And complex mapping, uh, as, is, as I said at the beginning of the, my presentation, com complex mappings are mainly used in many applications. And one of them is boundary very problem. So uh, in this problem, we are converting our D to simpler D. And it is a key part of the solution of the <laughs> boundary problems. And in this, it's an application of the conform mapping. And it is asking that uh, find the electro electrostatic potential. Uh, electric finding electric electric electrostatic potential is that actually uh, find the solution of the Laplace equation. 
in the uh, satisfying these boundary conditions. And we have to solve this problem. We have four step, but uh, for our concert, the first step is important. In this uh, part, we are uh, mainly using cross ratio. We are finding a conform conformal mapping, and then using conformal mapping, we find uh, the uh, simpler our uh, domain, and we are using another other steps to solve this solution. And during, during throughout uh, my presentation, we and my study with my mentor, mentor, we studied this book, the the last chapter of this book, a conformal mapping. And uh, I think this book has a good explanation, uh, and I really look, rec uh, recommend for. Uh, who wants to study in complex analysis and I use the other sources and thank you for listening. Thank you very much.